expensive one. <laughs> All right. We're joined uh, to help honor Rick Hendrick, his wife Linda Hendrick, and seven time NASCAR Premier Series champion Jimmy Johnson in here. Just a reminder, Mr. H holds the all-time record for both NASCAR Premier Series Championships with 12 and NASCAR National Series Championships with 15. Let's go ahead and open it up for questions. Thanks for being here, everyone. If you would, please raise your hand. We have a couple mics and state your name and affiliation. Let's start here with Ben. Uh, ben White with the Lexington Dispatch uh, newspaper. Uh, just an, uh, an easy question to start off. You talked about having five employees in 1984. Is that where the number five came from on the car? No. Um, <laughs> Harry Hyde was emphatic about having a single digit number. And five was the only one I think available at the time. So uh, five was the, what, he just wanted a single digit number. And, and um, man, uh, it's hard to believe when you go up on the hill and you look at that little tin building and you think about the fact that I actually was renting transmissions, rear ends, equipment, uh, everything uh, from him. And Randy Dorton was next door and we did the engines, but that was the most low buck deal that, that you could imagine because I thought it was going to be bigger the way it started and it did, didn't work out. But um, to think that you could win three races that year, just unbelievable in the day's world. I mean, you take millions and millions to get started, but uh, we ran Chrysler ends and Chrysler transmissions for a year before we ever got enough money to go to the uh, what everybody else was racing. But uh, let's go here to Mark and then to Bob. Uh, Mark Garrow, PRN. This is for Linda. For years, I, I lived in Raleigh for 14 or 15 years, and I had to drive every day past this little gas station. And for years, I wondered why there's the Hendrick, you know, tag on the nicest Lexus or, I mean, really primo cars parked there all the time. They're switched out all the time. And I always wondered about that. Finally ran into our mutual friend up there in uh, Raleigh, and he told me a little bit about the, the, the station at the bottom of the hill. Uh, can you talk about that experience? I guess you guys worked on cars together there, too, a little bit. And just can you talk about that little station that was mentioned in the uh, Hall of Fame acceptance speech. Well, Rick and I met at that station because I was taking a, a friend of ours um, in Dorali to meet her fiance, which was Rick's best friend at the time. And that's why I first was introduced to him by her. He was there working on a, his Corvette and it was Gene Henson's service station, a friend of his, and he allowed him to come over and work on it. So. Um, you know, that's where I met him. And yes, I did help him work on cars, but that was in his yard, you know, where we lived um, at home. We worked on cars after work and dump carburetors or, you know, sand and fiberglass or <laughs> adjusting headlights or whatever we had to do. I did mostly detailing on the cars, but I didn't do it at the service station, but, but he did a lot of work at that service station. Let's go to Bob and then Wolfgang. Uh, Bob Hawkers, ESPN. Uh, Rick, you talk about how you idolize the sport and idolized a lot of the people who've been inducted into the Hall of Fame. What is it about the sport that made you idolize it? Well, uh, I grew up not far from South Boston up on uh, Car Lake, and we would go to, my dad was working with Frank Edwards had a modified car. Ray, Ray Hendrick had a Jack Tant. And I, I was go with those guys to the race. My dad was involved in the 98. And Clayton Mitchell was a, I'd, I'd go to the shop when I was I don't know, eight years old. And um, and that was, so I, Fridays and Saturday nights, Friday nights in Richmond, Saturday nights, South Boston. And, uh, and if you really got to do something really special, you got to go to a, a NASCAR race. And the first one I remember was uh, Hillsboro, and it was dirt. And it was, um, I think Junior Johnson came in with a car and primer, 
And I remember Buck Baker and Buddy Baker had a grudge race with Richard Petty and Lee Petty. And the, I think uh, Baker's had to borrow Tiny Lund's car. And I remember that, and that was a long, long time ago. I have no idea what year it was, uh, but uh, I remember it was a dirt race in Hillsboro. And, uh, but that, to me, Fridays and Saturday nights with my dad going to Trenton, uh, modified racing. Uh, but the big race was, I, I remember I wanted to do something special for my mom and dad, and I sent them uh, to Daytona. That was in... Uh, Bless you. About <laughs> 70, 75, 75. And um, so, um, no, it was, it was kind of like, you know, in my growing up uh, as a gearhead, you saw the picture of me working on a car and automotive mechanics. Uh, that's all I really cared about. I was ADD off the chart. Uh, loved working on the race cars, being around the cars. Uh, and it was just... Uh, and, and NASCAR was the epitome of, of, uh, of racing. Let's go Wolfgang and then right behind him to Kenny. Uh, Wolfgang Monza from Germany, Ranchport Press Agency. Congratulations for the Hall of Fame induction. Thank you. And uh, in your speech, you said you started with track boat racing. Why did you choose track boat racing as a motorsport discipline? Why not going directly into car racing? And my second question is, now you built your own engines in NASCAR. Did you do the same in track boat racing as well? Um, okay, I think I... Um, when my dad was running the... involved in the modifieds, there was a guy by the name of Eddie Royster that drove the late model. My mother thought that was too dangerous, so I ruined boats, which was what, more dangerous. <laughs> and I lived on a lake, so, uh, and then I just got into drag boats, and then we, we won the national championship, I think, two or three years in a row, held the world record for the fastest propeller-driven boat. And then I drove a boat, my brother drove one, and Jimmy Wright out of Richmond, Virginia drove one. And he was killed in the boat in Litchfield, Illinois. And I could not, we tried to go back and do it again, and it just didn't, couldn't do it. And we stored the boats at Harry Hyde's shop, and that's how I met Harry. And uh, so it was, uh, if my mother had let me, I would have probably been in a late model car. I probably wasn't good enough, but I would have done it. And I, uh, but I drag raced that 31 Chevrolet and won a lot of races when I was 15 and uh, worked and built motors. In high school, I built my own motors out of scrap parts from the modified cars. So, uh, and you know, I've, I've kind of been in it all my life. And what people don't realize is, it was the racing that got me in the automobile business, not the automobile business that got me in racing. Let's go to Kenny, and then we'll come over here to Mike, please. Kenny Bruce, with NASCAR.com, Rick. Everybody seemed to be able to keep their emotions pretty much in check up there tonight. You mentioned talking to all different kinds of people and looking back at different things throughout this week. Was it a case where by the time you get here and get through all this, you're just emotionally drained? It, and it really was. I, this has been, the, and Linda will tell you, it's been the toughest week uh, without losing a family member I've ever, I mean, just raw emotions up and down. And we had a little champagne toast before I went in there. And the two doctors, the doctor that invented the medicine that saved my life was in there. And I lost it. I mean, Jeff Gordon said, I've never seen you that, that emotional in there since I've known you. And I, I, I just, the, my friends and family were in there and I got to be with them. So I got a little bit of out of me before I got into the, on the stage. But I was, when Linda came out and that, you know, it's, I think you get so busy in life, you, you're looking at today and what you're gonna do tomorrow and plan for how you're gonna race this year. How you're gonna, I've got rollouts with the automotive group next week and I'm knee deep in numbers and trying to get ready. But this week, I ratcheted back and I started looking at old pictures of uh, my dad, my mom, us when we first got married and thinking about Max Mulliman and thinking about Harry Hyde and all those stories and Tim Richmond 
and all just all those memories that they just I didn't do anything else this week but just think about go back and reflect on the past and it just man it was just like I, I couldn't help it I've never been that way but uh, and I'm, I'm kind of glad that I got to to take a minute and and we shared stories about remember when I left to go to school she was sanding a boat in the yard and a drag boat and uh, you know we we laughed about the adding up our money in the back of the the, the wind dixie to make sure we could pay when we got out and uh, you know those kind of things you you just forget about and uh, and then you you know you think about the fa the ones we lost and my son when Jimmy Jimmy just it was the sweetest thing ever when he dedicated the race and was talking to Ricky and uh, you know so you know I, we are like a big family and and even though it's a lot of us we care about each other and I don't, I don't care if people think that's corny uh, that's the way I was raised uh, it's worked for me and it's worked in our companies both of them and uh, and when Winston told me when I walked in here he said you know there's one thing I can tell you about the fabric of both of your companies your people love you and I said you know what you telling me that means as much to me as getting this being in the Hall of Fame because I feel like job well done because you look after your people they look after you and uh, you know I, maybe I'm just getting to the age I'm getting where I reflect back and uh, uh, Richard Petty and I had some really he's always given me some of the best one-liners that I've ever had you know when when he lost Adam and all we lost Ricky you know he told me he said you know I, we were walking through the garage one day and he said you know it, it, it wasn't our plan but, but it was God's plan and uh, so I meant what I said tonight about all the people in the sport there's some great folks uh, uh, you know, Richard Childress and I called each other. We were talking today. Joe Gibbs called me before he was going to be out of town. Roger Penske called me. I mean, when I was sitting in Daytona, I mean, not Daytona, but Homestead, with Roger Penske and Joe Gibbs, we were racing each other. And we were paying each other compliments. I mean, that you wouldn't see that in the NFL. I mean, it's we, have, we want to beat each other They're just as bad as anybody. But it's, uh, it's really strange. It's a different deal. It's, a, it's I, I don't know what it is but it's uh it's pretty special awesome let's uh mike and then david scott please mike Hembry, usa today rick the uh the first win at martinsville uh you get the purse and pick up a sponsor if you had not won that race or won sometime during that period were you, were you actually close to having to pull back yeah we, we had made that decision uh, you know, I was counting on a sponsor with, um, with you know, with Richard and in the, in the deal we were talking about. So with all-star racing on the car and going to Daytona and, man, looking down pit road thinking, I, you don't need to be here. And I couldn't afford it. I mean, we, I was, I could not afford to finish the year. And, you know, if you close the doors, you probably don't come back. And, uh, and Jeff Bodine knew that. I, I had told him and Harry I'd go as far as I could. And we wrecked a couple of times. We wrecked Darlington pretty hard. And um, I said, you know, we, and, but Harry said, he said, Bodine's so good at Martinsville. Let's go. If we can go to Martinsville, I think we can run well. And thank goodness uh, I listened to Harry and Jeff won the race because we picked up Northwestern Security Life. And if and that got us through the end of the year. And then as soon as we won that race, we got Levi Garrett about halfway through. And we won two more races. And then, you know, it, it just fell into place. But it was, I mean, we was done. We would, no way we would have come back. Let's go to David Scott. Uh, David's company, Charlotte Observer. Jimmy, we know the story about Jeff Gordon telling you when you were just coming in that, that Rick was interested in you. What was that like for you, and how soon did you get with him, and what was your first meetings kind of getting into into the sport with Rick like? Yeah, you know, the uh, 
the opportunity that I had to talk with Jeff in 2000 at the, um, I guess the fall Michigan race it was, um, I was looking for advice and, and I felt like Jeff really knew the answer. He was in a position um, earlier in his career where he had to leave Ford and a lot of the people that, that believed in him and got him going and he left and went went with Chevrolet and, and with Rick. And my, my situation was similar. Uh, the opportunities that I had met leaving Chevrolet and, and doing something different. So uh, I was one shocked that um, Jeff accepted, uh, you know, Jeff was willing to, to talk with me and, and spend some time with me that afternoon before the race. Two, I was shocked that he even knew who I was, that Mr. Hendrick knew who I was, and that they were considering starting a fourth team, to, and that was the driver that they were, they were talking about. So uh, mine was blown for sure. I had been around uh, Rick and Linda a little bit prior to that. Um, I'd been around Ricky Hendrick a ton. Uh, we were great friends, and I, I had no idea that behind the scenes, Ricky was one of the one of my biggest supporters and, and cheerleaders um, with Jeff, with Rick, with Linda, and uh, really helped kind of you know get some air under my wings within the company and people paying attention to me and, and looking at me as as an option. All right, everyone, congratulations, Mr. H. But before we let you go, we also wanted to present you with a couple more honors for the evening, as if you have, haven't had enough, right? Uh, not long after the 2017 NASCAR Hall of Fame class was announced last year, the accomplishments of each, each of this year's inductees were recognized in Congress by United States Representative Richard Hudson of North Carolina's 8th Congressional District. Mr. Hudson's remarks honoring each of the inductees from the two, 2017 class were recorded in the Congressional Record, the official record of all Congressional proceedings, and copies of those remarks were framed. Also, the Mecklenburg County Board of Supervisors, by unanimous vote, voted today as Rick Hendrick Day in Mecklenburg County. We have both of those proclamations with us here today, and we hope to get a photo with you before, oh, we, before we let you go. Absolutely. And thank you, folks, for, thank you for voting for me. I appreciate uh, the support getting in the hall. So thank you for, thank you for voting for me, if you did. <laughs> <laughs> I think most people in here did. I don't think you have to worry about that. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it, uh, we really appreciate you. You've been awful good to us. And this guy right here, Linda will remember this. Uh, Ricky talked me into letting him ride home with us one night. Yeah. And his alternator went out early in the race. Before the start of the race. Yeah. And so I spent three and a half hours <laughs> in St. Louis waiting for you. And bought you hamburgers coming home. Yes. So, so he, I, I, they were nice enough back. to give me a, a. Ricky mentioned I could ride home on the plane with them, and uh, the hoods up on the car on pit lane before the race even starts, basically. And I just assume my ride's gone, and I can ride home with my team. And I climb out of the race car, and Ricky's standing there. He's like, "We've got to go. My parents are at the plane. We've been waiting for you." I'm like, "What? Really?" So I was scared to death. Then, of course, went and uh, Rick served me a cheeseburger with a smile, and we flew home. Home, so thank you. <laughs> thank you for all the championships. That's great. <laughs> We're going to shoot right from here with this in the background. <laughs> you both are welcome to play. Yeah. Come on, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. We'll have two different ones. for the rest of the okay, Get some rest too. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> it was, it was awesome. Congratulations. Awesome. Amazing, awesome stuff. Awesome stuff.